Welcome to the National Labor Relations Board. Some of you may already be aware of the mission of the National Labor Relations Board, others may not. Through this videotape, we will introduce you to the important role of the National Labor Relations Board and how the agency operates. The National Labor Relations Board is a small, independent federal agency created in 1935 to administer the National Labor Relations Act, the principal law regulating relationships between labor unions and private employers. The purpose of the act is to reduce the number of interruptions in commerce caused by labor disputes. The agency has two main functions. One, to conduct secret ballot elections to determine whether employees wish to be represented by a union. And two, to prevent and remedy unlawful conduct by both employers and unions, called unfair labor practices. The agency has field offices located across the United States, as well as a headquarters building in Washington, D.C. The president appoints a five-member board that decides unfair labor practice cases on appeal from decisions of administrative law judges, as well as election cases. The president also appoints a general counsel who is responsible for the investigation and prosecution of unfair labor practice cases. The general counsel oversees the operation of the agency field offices. Each year, the agency processes thousands of cases filed against both unions and employers. The majority of unfair labor practice cases are either dismissed or settled by the field offices. As we will see, each case has its own story. We offer the following hypothetical case to give you some idea of what can happen when a charge is filed with the NLRB. The charge in our story is filed against the employer. However, many charges are also filed against unions. Hi, how you doing? It's 11 o'clock already. Time for lunch. Hey, Hector. Hi, Jan. How you guys doing? Uh, not too good. Hector and I just finished talking to the supervisor, you know, Rick. Mm -hmm. And he said that they're not getting a new janitor to replace Harry, and each of us is going to have to clean another floor during our shift. We clean more offices than janitors who work for other janitorial services in town. Not a raise in three years, and now we've got to work even harder than before? I'm really getting fed up with this place. Hector. Jan, I was talking to a friend of mine last week. She works at another janitorial service. She says her conditions there got a lot better since the employees voted in a union. You think we could get a union in here? I would like to hear what the union people have to say. Well, I'm all for it. Okay, then. I'm going to give her a call tonight and see if she can put me in touch with the union. Okay. Oh, hey, Maria, you're in early today. Yeah, I came in before my shift to pass out these flyers about the union meeting in the park Wednesday at lunchtime. I hope you'll be there. Sounds good. I will be there. All right. All right. <laughs> Guys, we did it. A representative is coming from the janitorial union to speak to us on Wednesday in the park at lunchtime. I'll be there. I can't believe how much more work we have now that Harry's left. Plus, we need a raise. <laughs> Mike's sub shop is raising their prices again. Yeah, well, that might be a good thing for you in the long run, Hector. <laughs> but I agree. We need a raise and other improvements. Absolutely. A union might be a good thing around here. Look, before you guys go, I want you each to take a flyer about this union meeting, okay? Maria, I will never allow a union in here. I run this business, and if you don't like it, you know where the door is. The following week, the employees hold a union meeting outside the workplace. Let's listen in as a union business agent explains to the employees the process of organizing a union. Hey, how are you? Hey, good. Maria, it's great to see you. <laughs> Hector. Hector. George. George. Now, as I said, I'm going to pass out some information about the union. And I have some authorization cards that Maria and I will pass out if you're interested in membership in the union. If we can get 30% of Gene's janitors to sign cards, the union can file a petition with the National Labor Relations Board seeking a secret ballot election then the employees can vote to see if they want to be represented by the union. After a petition is filed, the parties often reach agreement on a date, time, and place for an election. 
If the parties can't agree on the details of the election, the local NLRB office will conduct a hearing and determine which job classifications are eligible to vote as well as the date, time, and place of the election. The election is usually held at the employer's workplace. A board agent conducts a secret ballot election. Each side can have an observer at the election. To come to the table and state your name, please. Hector Rivera. Okay. Okay. The voting process is repeated for each eligible voter who chooses to vote until the designated closing time. At the conclusion of the election, the board agent opens the ballot box and counts the ballots. The majority of ballot votes counted will determine who has won the election. In the event of a tie, the tie goes to the employer. The union will not have been selected. Yes. 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 No. The yes votes are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Any question? A yes count is being seven. The no count is one, two, three. Any question? And the no count is being three. For the record, the approximate number of eligible voters was 10, voted ballots 0, votes cast for the union 7, votes cast against the union 3, the ballot votes counted 10, there were 0 challenge ballots, a total of 10 votes, a majority of ballot votes counted has been cast for the union. I need one representative for the company, one representative for the union to sign, and I'll give each of you a copy of the tally. Jan, are you late too? Yes, my bus broke down again. Have you heard anything further from the union? The union's waiting to see if the results of the election are official. That usually takes about a week or so. Then if no one files objections to the election, the board will certify the union as our representative. Wow, that's exciting. Hey, keep me posted. Okay. All right. Maria, I was checking the time cards today, and I noticed you were late. We just can't tolerate that anymore. I'm afraid we're gonna have to let you go. You're, you're joking, right? But Mr. Richmond, I, I have children I have to support. Please, give me another chance. You know, sometimes things happen. The babysitter didn't show up. I, I had to take the kids to my mom's. It's never been a problem before. Maria, here's your notice of termination. Now clear out your locker, turn in your smock, and uh, leave the premises. I can't believe I was discharged for being late. I'm one of the best workers they have. I've worked there the last five years. You know what's worse, Jan? She clocked in just as late as I did that day. She wasn't even given a warning. Yeah, I know she's been late more times than me. Maria, I believe your discharge may be a violation of the National Labor Relations Act. Now, you told me that Richmond knew about your support for the union? Well, Mr. Richmond saw me handing out some flyers about the union a few weeks ago. <laughs> yeah, he wasn't very happy. He said he ran a business, and if you don't like it, you can leave. Well, the National Labor Relations Act protects employees from being discharged or otherwise disciplined for supporting a union. I'm going to file a charge with the National Labor Relations Board alleging that the Jeans Company discharged you because you supported the union. After I file a charge, the board agent will make an appointment for you to explain what happened. Okay. Hi, may I help you? Yes, I'm Maria Travaglia, and I'm here to see Board Agent Hopkins. Okay. Uh, please have a seat while I notify Mr. Hopkins that you're here. Thank you. Once a charge is filed, it is assigned to a board agent, who will then receive evidence from the charging party. This evidence is usually in the form of confidential statements or affidavits from various witnesses. Then the board agent will gather evidence from the other side. Hi, Mr. Vaya. I'm Jim Hopkins, the board agent assigned to your case. 
Why don't we step into my office so that you can tell me your version of what happened? I'll write it up, and if you agree with it, you can sign that. We'll use that as the affidavit in your case. Right this way. Once all the evidence is gathered, the board agent presents the case to a committee of senior staff, which may include the regional director, who is in charge of the entire office, and the supervisor. They will meet to discuss the facts of the case and the relevant case law. Based on the evidence presented by the union and the employer during the investigation, I would recommend that we issue a complaint against the employer alleging that Ms. Trevaya's discharge violated the act. Ms. Trevaya was very active in supporting the union. In fact, she contacted the union and was the observer during the election. Do we know whether the employer was aware of her union activities? Yes, according to the investigation, Supervisor Richman observed Ms. Trevaya handing out leaflets announcing the union meeting. In fact, he even threatened her at that time. I would also allege that this threat violated the act. How bad was her tardiness problem? According to the records, she was no worse than any other employee. In fact, another employee was not even disciplined, although she and Trevaya punched in at the same time on the day in question. What's the status of the union organizing campaign? Well, they're certified. Uh, however, I have concerns that Ms. Trevaya's discharge may impact the support of the union. It's a very small unit. Ms. Trevaya was very active in the union. Let's check with the union as to what impact Trevaya's discharge has had on other employees and the bargaining. We may want to recommend injunctive relief to the board. This would allow us to order the employer to reinstate Trevaya immediately pending her unfair labor practice hearing. The regional committee had no trouble deciding this case since it involves a pretty straightforward violation of the law. Sometimes, if a case is more complex than this one, there are other paths it may follow, especially if it involves a difficult legal question. Then, the region would submit the case to the Division of Advice, located in headquarters in Washington, D.C. There, a team of attorneys would review the case and advise the region on whether there's been a violation of the act. In this particular case, the region decided there was merit to the charge. If the region dismisses a case, the charging party has the right to appeal the dismissal to the Office of Appeals, located in headquarters. There, the case file will be reviewed by an attorney to determine whether the region correctly decided the case. If the Office of Appeals feels the region was in error, the staff attorney makes a written recommendation to the General Counsel, seeking reversal of the region's decision. Once the decision is made to issue complaint, the region may submit the case to the injunction litigation branch if there is a possibility that the board's usual processes will take too long to provide effective relief. Under Section 10J of the Act, the board can seek an injunction from a federal district court for immediate interim relief to the charging party while the case works its way through the normal board process. Immediate interim relief would, in this case, give Maria her job back while the case is pending. After the region issues a complaint, there are also discussions to try to settle the case. Most cases do settle at this point, but if the parties are unable to reach an agreement, then the case goes to hearing before an administrative law judge or an ALJ. An ALJ is actually a judge employed by the board who hears only cases arising under our act. In many ways, the hearing is very similar to what might occur in a general courtroom. Let's take a look at the hearing in Maria's case. Now, can you tell us what Mr. Richmond said to you when he told you you were fired? Uh, yes, he said that he noticed from my time card that I was late and he wasn't going to tolerate it anymore. And how late were you on that day? I was 10 minutes late. Are you aware of any other employees coming in late? Well, yeah. You know, things happen. In fact, Jan punched in the same time I did that day. Are you aware of any employees that have ever been fired for coming in 10 minutes late? No. I don't think anyone ever has. And what about Jen? Was Jan fired that day for coming in late, the day that you were fired? No. I don't think anything happened to her. Okay. Thank you. After the hearing, the ALJ will consider the briefs submitted by the parties, the testimony and exhibits presented at the hearing, and board case law and issue a recommended decision. Hi, Maria. Yeah, hi, this is Jim from the Labor Board. How are you? I'm doing great, thanks. Listen, I'm giving you a call with some great news. 
We received the decision from the ALJ. Yeah, and we won. <laughs> Yay, that's great. Oh, I'm so glad. Because, you know, things haven't been going well at this new job I took. Oh, that's such good news. So when do I go back to work? And will the company have to pay me for the time I lost? I guess that's called getting back pay. Whoa, whoa I, I wish it were that simple. Remember, the decision is only a recommendation to the board. It only becomes a final decision if the jeans company doesn't appeal to the board. And to tell you the truth, I'd be surprised if they don't file any exceptions. Oh, I can't believe it. It's, it's been so long already. I know, but look, they have 28 days to appeal to the board by filing the exceptions. We'll just have to wait and see what they do. Yeah, Richmond here. Oh, hey, Counselor. What's up? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. What? What do you mean they won? No, that judge is wrong. They can't do this. I want to appeal that decision. Now, I'll, I'll take it all the way to the Supreme Court if I have to. Well, as you can see, not every losing party is willing to comply with an ALJ's recommendation. And they have every right to appeal or take exceptions to the board. Once a party files exceptions, the transcript of the hearing and any exhibits go to the board where the case is assigned to a three-member panel. Well, I thought the employer had a pretty decent defense about her being late. But I think the general counsel has proven that her discharge was because of her union activity. And that's unlawful under the act. Yes, the fact that Travaya's colleague checked in just as late with no repercussions really knocks out the employer's defense. All right, write it up that we affirm the ALJ's decision that this discharge was unlawful and then circulate it among the other board members to make sure they agree. All right, we'll take care of it. Okay, that's it. Hi, Maria. Yeah, hi, this is Jim. Fine, and you? Listen, I'm calling you with some great news. The board issued a decision upholding the ALJ. That's great! Oh, finally, I knew we'd win. When do I go back to work? Well, hopefully soon. I'll call their attorney and we'll talk about whether they're going to comply with the board's order. Yay! <laughs> I am so happy this is finally over. Oh. When do you think I can pick up my back paycheck? Well, now don't get too excited just yet, Maria. We've won up until now, and most respondents comply at this point. But you never know, and he has a right to appeal the case if he wants to. I hope it doesn't go that way, but we'll just have to wait and see. Listen, I'll call the attorney and let you know when I know something. All right. Oh, I hope they don't take it any further. Yeah, Richmond here. Oh, hey, Counselor, what's up? Uh-huh. What? What do you mean the board upheld the judge's decision? I cannot believe this. No, I, I want to appeal it. No, I don't care how much it costs. It's the principle of the thing. They can't tell me how to run my business. Well, as you can see, the board's decision is not always the end of the case. Let's look at the various routes a case can take at this point. Most often, a respondent goes along with or complies with the board order. A compliance officer in the regional office will figure out the back pay and make sure all parts of the board's order are carried out. In this case, for Maria, that would mean deducting her interim earnings from her gross back pay and reinstating her to her former position with the jeans company. There's always the possibility also that before the board issues its order, a respondent goes bankrupt or is somehow otherwise unable to pay. In that event, the case will go to the special litigation branch in the general counsel's office. That branch is responsible for representing the agency in any unusual bankruptcy proceedings. Also, a respondent can just refuse to comply. Board orders aren't self-enforcing, which means that there's nothing the board can do at this point to force a respondent to comply. To force compliance, the board has to get an order from a U.S. Court of Appeals enforcing the board's order. If the respondent refuses to comply or decides to appeal the case, the case is assigned to the appellate court branch of the Enforcement Division in the General Counsel's Office. 
Once a case goes to the agency's appellate court branch, it is assigned to an attorney who attempts a settlement. If the parties don't reach a settlement, the attorney has to research the case law in the circuit courts and write a brief to the appellate court. The court will generally schedule an oral argument and the NLRB appellate attorney will argue the case. And so there is substantial evidence on the record to support the board's finding that Jean's company fired Maria Travaglia in retaliation for protected union activity. Thank you, counsel. Hi, Maria. It's Jim from the Labor Board. How are you? Great. Listen, I've got some good news for you. The Court of Appeals has decided to enforce the board's order. We've won. Well, I suppose that's good news, isn't it? I don't know. What happens now? Another couple of years before they take it to the Supreme Court? Well, I don't know, Maria. They could do that, but I can tell you that most respondents don't go that far. We may have to have a compliance proceeding in order to determine the amount of back pay you're owed, but we might be able to agree on an amount. Look, don't give up hope. I'll give their attorney a call, and, and I'll see if I can find out what's going to happen. Let's consider the employer's options at this point. With a court order in hand, the agency can force compliance through the courts. If the employer here still refused to comply, the case would be assigned to the contempt litigation branch, where they would seek contempt sanctions from the Court of Appeals and force the respondent to comply. The court may order fines, and ultimately, a respondent may be thrown in jail for refusing to comply with the court's order. If the employer wanted to, he could pursue the case to the Supreme Court. If he did, the case would then be handled by the Supreme Court branch in the agency's Division of Enforcement. Also, if the board had lost before the Court of Appeals, then the board can appeal to the Supreme Court. If the case raises a new issue or there is a split among the circuits, then our agency's Supreme Court branch will recommend to the board whether to ask the U.S. Supreme Court to review the decision of the Court of Appeals. Agency attorneys work on these aspects of cases as well. Let's see what happens here. Yeah, Richmond here. Oh, hey, Counselor, what's up? What? You mean the Court of Appeals enforced the board's order? Oh, what is going on here? Why can't they just let a guy run his own business? Uh, I tell you, I, I have already spent too many thousands of dollars trying to fight this thing. If the government says I gotta let Travaya come back, well then let's get her back to work already. Oh, I don't know. What is the world coming to when the government can force you to let your workers try to form a union? Hey! <laughs> That's the end of Maria's story. She goes back to work and is compensated for any lost earnings. And that's the end of our story, too, for now. As you can see, there are many parts of this agency and many board employees involved in every case filed with the board. Every case involves real people with real lives. You, too, have an important role to play in upholding the policies of the National Labor Relations Act. We need the help of every one of you to help make the policies of the National Labor Relations Act a reality.